All right, let me explain something to y'all, okay? Sometimes you make decisions modding your car that need some adjustments down the road because maybe your plans have changed. That's exactly what's happened to me. I'm gonna be making some changes to my car today. Let's take a look. Sorry guys, neighbors' dogs are going nuts for whatever reason. So pardon the noise, but here's what we're looking at today, all right? I want to show you a couple of things under the hood because there are some mods that I've already done that we're going to be making some adjustments to today. And I'll explain to you why. So here we have the Mishimoto air intake, all right? It's been really great. And uh, it's been wonderful for me. It sounds good, performance is good, and I'm changing it. And the reason why I'm changing it is for a couple of reasons. A, this is metal, which uh, unfortunately absorbs heat a little quicker than, say, plastic, right? Now, there is some kind of thin coating on it. I don't think that's uh, to dissipate heat. I think that's just an aesthetic thing. And the reason why I picked a Mishimoto intake to begin with is there were some options on the market that weren't yet available and I liked the OEM-ish look of this setup. The other thing that we're gonna note is the Mishimoto front mount intercooler. Now, this thing is ginormous. If you guys haven't seen that video when I was installing this thing, it is huge. And if you look very carefully, I mean, there isn't any space at all on the inside of that bumper. Not to the side, not below it, not anywhere. I mean, if you, when you take the bumper off, you can actually see every millimeter of space is taken up in there. It's a great intercooler, but the problem is it doesn't allow for airflow to get past the intercooler to, to the radiator that sits behind it. So why this all became a consideration is because when I first started, uh, my plans were just to modify the car a little bit, enjoy it as a daily driver, have some spirited driving here and there. I had no idea I was gonna be getting involved in track days as, as often as I am and as, uh, as enthusiastically as I have. And that is all attributed to the great guys that I've met since owning this car. They really pulled me into the track life and I'm hooked. So here we are. I made some initial decisions on mods. We're changing them today because of the known heat soak issue with these cars on track. Here's what we're switching it to. And by the way, huge shout out to Dennis at PRL. Thank you for the huge hookup on these parts today. It was uh, myself that reached out to him, but when I got connected with him, he really helped me sort out some of my needs on my car. So thank you. Let's take a look at the stuff we got. All right, so first up, and this is not something I've yet done, but that is a Koyo Rad high volume radiator. This is a lot bigger than the factory radiator. And uh, per my other buddy's experience with this radiator, uh, it should get you another couple laps uh, before overheating. And that's really the name of the game, guys. It's about how long you can go before you overheat. And that really goes uh, depending on the track you're on as well. Some tracks are gonna be a lot easier on the car heat-wise than others. My home track unintentionally has become Laguna Seca, which is one of the hardest tracks on a car, uh, at least in our area. I don't know if one harder, the, the braking is incredibly hard on the car and uh, the hard acceleration in straights and uphill. Uh, I mean, it, it just really puts the car through the paces. And so uh, since I spent a lot of my time on that track, these are all mods that I'm doing to help me get through a session without any heat issues. Let's take a look at the rest of the stuff. So some JDM goodies. We got the HKS front mount intercooler. This is going to be a lot lighter 
than the Mishimoto intercooler, uh, albeit the capacity for horsepower won't be as high as a Mishimoto, but this is still going to be good for probably uh, 600 plus wheel horsepower, which is more than enough, probably more than I'll ever see in this car. So with the weight savings and the smaller diameter intercooler, it will better allow for airflow around the intercooler and get to the radiator, which is a huge factor when considering the overheat issue. And then over here, again, thanks to PRL for the hookup. Um, I've got a charge pipe kit and uh, the high volume air intake as well which uh, the housing if you don't already know and we'll get a look at all this stuff once it's installed is all plastic which is less susceptible to heat soak. Um, I'm going to try and set up a camera in the car while the Mishimoto intake is installed so we can get a look at the ambient air temps and, and how that relates to how well the Mishimoto intake is handling those uh, those temperatures. Now, keep in mind, take all this with a grain of salt. Everybody's situation is going to be a little bit different. Unfortunately, you can manipulate uh, air temperatures for the intake to, to make it look any way that you want. And so this will just be based on my drive uh, to see Dr. Drew and my drive going home after the new intake is installed. Now, it's all in theory. Yes, the Mishimoto intake is metal. Yes, metal absorbs heat uh, quicker than plastic. So in that theory, the plastic housing on the PRL should do better for heat soak. Now, that's not really going to be seen until we get the car back on track. Huge shakedown coming from my car at uh, Laguna Seca again on November the 18th. Probably won't have the video out right on November 18th because it's going to be a lot of editing. But with all the changes going on the cars, guys, you better stay tuned. There's a lot to go over on that track day. Um, see how all these new mods are going to be doing. So we're going to go. We're going to load the car up now. We're going to go see Dr. Drew. He's going to get this all installed. I'll get you a quick shot of everything when it's installed and uh, then you'll just have to stay stay tuned for the shakedown on uh, November 18th, all right? So let's head out now. I am a spark flickering in the dark Quickly I'm catching on Letting on my heart show ooh, 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 ooh. My beauty marks Every word that left a scar Yeah, this is where happy starts I'm feeling it in my bones I'm not beautiful like you I'm beautiful like me That's beautiful, you see
Okay, so we're here a few days after the install of the HKS intercooler, the PRL charge pipe kit, and the PRL high volume intake. Now I'm going to take you guys on a little drive just to give you my initial reactions uh, to the changes because even in my small drive back from the install, there were definitely some no noticeable changes. Let's go for a ride. So I'll tell you the biggest noticeable change immediately, even from low speeds, is how quickly the boost comes on now. I, I almost feel like the, the Mishimoto intercooler and the piping um, somehow was causing lag that I wasn't aware of. But now I realize after switching to the HKS, talk right then but after switching to the HKS and the PRL charge pipe kit the boost comes on like that oh man this car just wants to pull Woo! now with the PRL high volume intake on hard acceleration, even with the exhaust valve all the way open, I can still hear the induction noise from the intake. Which before with the uh, Mishimoto intake, if I have the valve all the way open, I could not really hear the induction noise from the intake anymore. Shine. Yeah, I wanna live my life. Burning like a wildfire I wanna let my soul shine Wanna let my soul shine Burning like a wildfire oh. So here are my final thoughts on the switch from Mishimoto to HKS and PRL. I can't overstate this enough. Mishimoto makes a really good product. In fact, there are still some things on the Mishimoto product list that I would like to have for this car. Having said that, I feel like the intercooler and the intake just weren't up to my needs uh, as far as tracking wise is concerned. And I think the, the Mishimoto products might be better suited to maybe a drag racing setup. I don't know, but it's a really nice product, very high quality, it looks good, it fits very well. Um, I just, you know, one of the unfortunate things about this car is it has a tendency to overheat on the track. And once you get into modifying it and tracking it more and more, you find that's where you're spending most of your time and effort uh, trying to mitigate. So having said that, the HKS and PRL combination, uh, per my observation so far, are absolutely amazing. I can't wait to see what all this does on track, the big shakedown on, on November 18th, and see how it all comes together. There's definitely a lot of changes. Everything is going to be doing its part to contribute. But being able to get boost on earlier and get out of corner sooner is definitely going to play into those factors and allowing more room for air to flow around what was that huge intercooler i think will definitely help uh keeping the car a little bit cooler on track which is important because these cars have a tendency to overheat and uh, it's just something you gotta uh, work around but that's it for today's video guys thank you so much for joining me i appreciate you guys very much i see a lot of you guys watching my videos and uh, a few of you still aren't subscribed so please hit that subscribe button help support the channel so i can continue making these videos for you and as always stay hungry stay fast stay tuned i'm michael baxi and i'm out flickering in the dark quickly i'm catching on letting on my heart show ooh, ooh, my beauty marks i am
every word that I